In the first installment of this series, we created a project in Xcode, updated the project structure and put it under source control. This lesson focuses on building the basic user interface of the application. If you want to follow along, open the project you created in the previous installment or clone the GitHub repository. The weather application we're building runs on iPhone and iPad. We want to create a user interface that looks great and feels right on both device families. There are several ways to accomplish this. The approach I have chosen for takes advantage of size classes. Thunderstorm will present three views to the user. The current weather, the forecast for the day and the forecast for the week. On devices with a compact horizontal size class, for example the iPhone SE, the user can navigate between these views by swiping left and right. On devices with a regular compact size class, for example iPad Pro, these views are presented side by side. To accomplish this, we make use of a collection view. The view controller that manages the collection view will be the root view controller of the project. Select the view controller class in the project navigator and delete it from the project. Create a new group in the view controllers group, name it root view controller and link it to a folder named root view controller. We covered the relation between groups and folders in the previous lesson. Add a new UI view controller class to the root view controller group and name it root view controller. There's no need to create a zip file for the class, we will be using storyboards. Create an outlet for the collection view and make the root view controller class conform to the UI collection view data source and UI collection view delegate flow layout protocols. Notice that I created an extension for each protocol. This is a nice trick to keep related code organized. Open main.storyboard and select the view controller of the view controller scene. Open the identity inspector on the right and set class to root view controller. Drag a collection view from the object library to the view of the root view controller and make it span the width and height of the view. Connect the collection view to the collection view outlet of the root view controller instance. Add the necessary layout constraints to pin the collection view to the top, bottom, leading and trailing edges of the view of the root view controller. Select the collection view, open the connections inspector on the right and set its data source and delegate properties to the view controller of the scene, that is the root view controller. With the collection view still selected, open the attributes inspector and set items to zero, scroll direction to horizontal and uncheck shows horizontal indicator and shows vertical indicator and check paging enabled. If you have some experience building iOS application, then these steps should not pose any problems. Before we can build the application, we first need to implement the required methods of the UI collection view data source protocol. Open the root view controller class and define an enum root view type to help us with this. Note that we declare the enum within the root view controller class. The enum makes working with the collection view easier and more elegant. The static computed property count helps us implement the collection view number of items in section method of the UI collection view data source protocol. We also need to tell the collection view which collection view cells it needs to display. In the view did load method, we invoke a helper method, setup view. And in setup view, we invoke another helper method, setup collection view. I like to keep methods short and concise. In setup collection view, we register the UI collection view cell class for the sum cell reuse identifier. We clean up the implementation of setup collection view later in this lesson. We can now implement the collection view cell for item add method of the UI collection view data source protocol. We set the background color of the content view of the collection view cell to a green color to visualize what we have so far. Build and run the application in the simulator to take a look. It's time to add the view controllers for each root view type, day, now and week. Each collection view cell of the collection view contains a view controller. For that, 
we need to create three UI collection view cell subclasses and three UI view controller subclasses. Open the project navigator and create three groups and corresponding folders in the view controllers group. Name them day view controller, now view controller, and week view controller. Create three UI view controller subclasses and add each subclass to its corresponding group. The implementation of these view controllers is very basic for now. Add a group and corresponding folder named collection view cells to the root view controller group. We need to create a UI collection view cell subclass for every root view type. Date collection view cell, now collection view cell, and week collection view cell. The implementation is very similar and easy to understand. We declare a static property for the reuse identifier of the UI collection view cell subclass and a constant property, view controller, for the UI view controller subclasses we created earlier. In the initializers, we instantiate the view controller. We also invoke setup view controller, a helper method in which we configure the view controller. The only difference between the UI collection view cell subclasses is the reuse identifier, the type of the view controller property, and the background color of the view controller. It's now time to update the root view controller class. And we start by updating the setup collection view method. This also allows us to update the collection view cell for item add method of the UI collection view data source protocol. We create an instance of the root view type enum and DQ a collection view cell based on the value of the enum. Notice that we throw a fatal error if we're unable to create a root view type instance, because this should not happen in production. If you build and run the application, you should see three collection view cells, each with a different color. This is a sign that we're on the right track. The last piece of this puzzle is correctly setting the size of the collection view cells. Even though the user interface looks different on iPhone and iPad, it's more correct to say that the user interface looks different depending on the size class. If the size class for the horizontal dimension is compact, the collection view cell spans the width of the collection view. If the size class for the horizontal dimension is regular, then the collection view cell spans a third of the width of the collection view. To make this work, we implement four methods of the UI Collection View Delegate Flow Layout Protocol. As you can see, I've used several helper properties to clean up the implementation of these methods. I try to avoid hard-coded values in method implementations as much as possible. The most interesting property is Aspect Ratio, a computer property whose value is based on the horizontal size class of the view controller's trait collection property. If you build and run the application, you notice that everything looks fine. Well, sort of. There's one issue we need to address. We need to update the layout of the collection view when the size of the view controller's view changes. We can do this by overriding a method of the UI content container protocol, a protocol every UI view controller conforms to. The method we need to override is view will transition to with. Whenever the size of the view changes, we invalidate the layout of the collection view layout. This ensures the collection view is updated correctly. OK, build and run the application once more. Rotate the device a few times to make sure everything is working as expected. With a basic user interface in place, it's time to start focusing on populating the application with data. We do that in the next installment. You can find the source files of this tutorial on GitHub. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below or reach out to me on Twitter. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to learn more about Swift and Cocoa development.